outfit and Australia's centre pass to start it. Away we go. And McMahon to Cox. And already the intensity of the defence far greater than anything we've seen before now. And as you can see, McCloma all over that ball that McMahon was trying to shoot. And she does give away a lot of height, McMahon. So Brownfield has it after the uh, failed first attempt. That's got to be a replay. Yeah, dropping the ball and reclaiming it. That's a replay. Early turnovers against both sides. Nat von Berto. And that one was against uh, Agbizi. Goalkeeper uh, using that was mentor. She defending off the court. No, she was caught for contact for backing in. Australia first on the board. It was 47 to 40 when they last met in England in May. Australia's only ever been beaten by England once. And that was in 1981. Now the defence from both sides is working overtime. You can see neither team has been able to score in the opening few minutes. England. Australia's head-to-head -head is 45 and 1 against England, but they are the big improvers of world netball. Little touch oh, from Gerard. Oh, brilliant. What, a, what a touch. She went in blindly to that ball and was able to flick it on. I think she sensed where Ellis was, and that's that swift teamwork at work. That was Mentor getting caught for contact around the body. Well, I think it's going to take some inspired netball, like the turnover we saw from Gerard, to separate these teams. It'll take something special. I'm expecting that it'll be very close contest. Well, McCloma had her arm right around McMahon there, and it's really going to be up to the umpires today to keep on top of these things because it's, you know, they're going to give everything these sides, and occasionally, well, maybe even often, they're going to test the rules. As McMahon, an uncharacteristic miss. And uh, McCloma and Mentor are attracting plenty of whistle here. They are fiercely determined and athletic defenders. It's just their amazing reach. That's the most scary part of playing them. Still looking to get on the board after almost three minutes of play, England. That's it. Oh, Cookie was screaming for it in the circle. Well, she certainly had the free drive in. Brownfield doing a lot of work outside. That's uncharacteristic for her. Clark and Atkinson. 29, the oldest of the starting seven for England. It was uh, Karen Aspinall, you might have known her as. Cookie. Oh, brilliant. Even Norma Plummer managed to smile after that England goal. But Australia's made a pretty solid start here. Great drive and dish off. That was in one take. And you see how hard McMahon is going to have to work giving away centimetres in height and the, the reach of McClana and Mentor can be a feature today. That was a strong take. Atkinson. Oh, great footwork. Gosh, she reminds you of McMahon, the way she moves. Cookie. Yes. Bomberto. Yeah, and that's uh, Cookie being pinged for the contact. Oh, and a giveaway there from Laura Bomberto. Well picked off by McCloma. Well, it's one of those cross-court balls that you just don't want to do in a match like this. Contact from McMahon. England trailing by a couple with four and a bit minutes gone. Cookie rounds it up. And Alison Cormack did well to get the whistle out of her mouth. She was about to blow for the contact against Australia. And this is a possession for a levelling goal. Just one back in the circle. Gerard hurries back now, but Brownfield take the shot. Well, it came in too easily from the Australian defence line then because Gerard was put out of play. Well, shutting down Laura Bomberto is an option off the set of pass. Great defence. And contact against Nat Bomberto off the ball. 
Dalton Hines pretty busy with the whistle this first quarter. Well, he's, got his, he's got his vision everywhere to see that because I totally missed that. McCloma to Clark. Cookie. Oh, and Ellis has tipped it out. She could have let that one go because Brownfield had given up on it. Oh, quick hands from Clark. Well, Australia not used to seeing that from anyone else but themselves and maybe the Ferns. Well, I don't even think the Ferns move it as, as fast and as crisply as this England side do. And if you thought this may not have been a contest, England are in front. 5-4, five, five and a half minutes gone. Cookie to Brownfield. Clark. Contact, go on attack. Contact, wing defence. Contact against Prendergast. Clark. Beautifully placed for Brownfield. Ellis oh, pushing. Oh, yes, coming from out. behind. You can't reach in over the top to grab that ball, so they've paid it to the front position. McMahon. Laura Von Berto. Cox. Oh, oh, there's a lot of body clashes in there. They are four big people in there, McMahon. Oh, what a rejection. Oh, that is amazing, tough netball. Watch <laughs> this, Cox. She used her body well to get rid of mental. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck picking it. the now, contact out of that. They're all doing it. Now, Hines has to be careful here, the umpire. He's got to set the tone early and what he's going to allow and what he's not. And if he needs to warn, do it early. Yeah, well, it, no one's taking a backward step in that circle. It's kind of scary if you're in there, really. <laughs> Five all. What a match we've got. It's everything we hoped for. Good tip on the ball from Mentor. He's got long arms. A well, split circle from the English defenders. Looks like they want to make it worth the wait. We've had a lot of lopsided matches until this one. The Australians working overtime trying to get that ball in. Lomberto frees herself up. Cox. Oh, great movement by Cox. <laughs> and a lovely drop back into space from Cox. Turnover and Australia's got a chance here. Push it back out to two. McCann struggling, uses the floor well, and Cox is there. It's great body positioning from Cox. That height's an advantage. Australia's centre pass. McMahon's copying plenty. <laughs> Cox, an athletic take. Oh, that gave uh, too much of a look to Agbizi. Hasn't really been in the game until now. Brownfield. Clark, and she went offside, well picked up by Cormac. Gerard, over there, go that way. <laughs> Matt Bomberto screaming for it, and tipped out by the effervescent Jade Clark. Prendergast, driving up the middle, McMahon, and that's one against McCloma. Roma's getting called for holding on as she can't find her player. She's putting her arms out. She does that often. England. A little bit of breathing space at 8 5. Oh, a mistake there. It was just a question I, I thought everyone had coming into this match whether England's impressive results and form would stand up under greater scrutiny and pressure. Well, we know their defence and hand, it's whether their attackers can do it. Cox, one step in, long range shot. Australia. Oh, I thought he could have given uh, the contact yeah, there. Yeah, he could have. I thought Cox had two hands on that ball. Vanish contact centre. Cox making a good Who's lead out. And, a, and again, oh, mentors absolutely all over McMahon. Their arms and legs interlocked. Well, they're using the offside arm so that it's hard for Dalton Hines, the umpire, to see. Well, he saw something. And 9-5 Australia. Prendergast, McMahon. Prendergast, what, what a match this is for her, but she's played against New Zealand and stood up to it. Cox working well outside the circle. Yes, it's opening it up for McMahon in the, in the middle of the circle, giving her plenty of room. The penalty's going heavily against England, 16-7. But I'll tell you what, they're giving away plenty. We can see them and we're a fair way away. They are. They're getting 
away with a lot at the moment. I don't know they're getting away with much. They're getting pinged, but... Well, they're, they're even getting away with a lot more, so... Yeah. I think Australian defenders are certainly much cleaner at this early stage of the match. See how it goes in the second quarter. Oh, oh out of the hit. hands of Cookie. She turns to Alison Cormack and said that one had a bit of help. And she got no help from the umpire, though. Cox. Nat Lombardo to Laura. Oh, beautiful play. Oh, no. Oh, he's got that one no, wrong. Sorry, Dalton. came <laughs> off the defender's arms, not the Australian attackers. Oh, but it's played at such pace. We're going to see some mistakes everywhere today, not just from players, but umpires too. Great movement by the attackers. They've got to find someone that was lucky. Cookie. That's been a while coming. Cookie's four from four. 10-6. And we've got four minutes left in this first quarter, which has absolutely flown by, Ella. <laughs> At last, the contest. I know. <laughs> Brilliant contest. There's been a lot of criticism of the tournament's uh, one-sided results. Instruction against Mentor. McCloma has just such a long reach, and she'll reach from behind, she'll go to the side. Not sure what happened there. Cox, seven goals, McMahon, three. Cox, so much taller than McMahon, and maybe they'll just uh, keep dishing off to Catherine today. Well, look, I think uh, Catherine is actually playing a really good game so far, opening up the space. She's got the height there. Use her if she's in position. England's throw in. Uh, determined touch there for. Ellis to slow down the England play. Lovely ball this time. Brownfield. Perfect, in fact. Brownfield three from three. Cookie four from four. It was a great take. She steadied on the shot. I'll tell you what, we're going to have a winning Australian coach today, but only one of them's coaching <laughs> Australia. Mark Caldo. See, there's a football brain there. Contact against Prendergast. This to get England back within two. Great screen by Cookie to open Brownfield on the base. Lovely work, England. England have not missed. This great shooting we've heard a lot about. Yeah, There's no myth. Cox fo forced away to the front of McClomer and Mentor. And one-handed, casual as you like. McMahon got the rebound. Just with that balance and poise reaching out of court. Break against Prendergast. Came over the line too early. Just, it's not her position. I say that again. But, uh, it's Australia by three. A couple oh, of minutes. Oh, brilliant ball. Great dodging by Brownfield to draw Liz Ellis out of the circle. Nat Bomberto. Oh, play on, please. Alison Cormack. They're tenacious in defence. They want it badly, England. Brownfield just rolls away from Ella. She is quick, taller, and at least as fast as Liz Ellis. Here comes England. Down by the one. Brown's obstructing goal attack. McCloma. Nice try, Nat Lomberto. Just coming in a little bit late. Jade Clark. Brownfield to the front of the circle. And the England cheers start to go up. Players check the time and the scoreboard. This for 11 all. Brownfield. Who's got it? Oh. Australia has oh. off about four sets of hands. Ellis. Oh, again, let it go. For goodness sake, Alison Cormack. There's a rule called advantage. Play it. Great drives from the Thunderbirds. Attack end. Both Bomberto sisters playing well. Cox. Hell ball. Cox for three seconds. And applause from Mark Galdo for the defensive effort. Great pick up by the Aussie girls. Gerard. The Aussies can resettle. Cox needs help. Nat Bomberto. McMahon. Oops. Turnover. Just a bit too quick and flustered was McMahon. She's got to settle. She's getting crunched every time she takes the ball. I wonder who these New Zealand fans want to win because they've been be beaten, beaten by both teams this year. Australia trying to stop the levelling score before quarter time. Brownfield. 
Clark, Brownfield. Oh, it's given Australia possession. Oh, there was contact. No, that's, that's a yeah. shocker. Brownfield should have had the penalty. That was a bad call. Oh, that would have been the levelling goal, and they should have been allowed to have it. Some very average umpiring affecting both teams here, I have to say. It's Australia by the one. No changes for the second quarter. Laura Bomberto back to Gerard and Cox on the fly. McMahon, good position there. Better structure from Australia. It was more direct to goal. Cox to the floor. The miss from McMahon. She's getting a terrible time from those tall, athletic England defenders. Ellis, almost a replay there. Prendergast. Oh, it's a mistake-filled uh, netball, but it's because of the pressure of the defence. It it's is, absolutely brilliant. It is the pressure and the fact that this is the first real contest they've had all week, so it's been easy up until now. And both coaches were afraid of this, that they've not really been tested until now. And the heat's on, and the mistakes are coming. Uh, a touch on the arm, I don't and know about both that. both defenders that she, the umpire's called that have touched on the arm, so I didn't think the second one was. No. And, and just a little bit of sympathy for the umpires here. They haven't had to umpire a match this tight or fast before. Cookie. Oh, brilliant shot. Jammed it in. <laughs> Caldo has certainly been working with those goalers. Oh, dear. Average. <laughs> Agbizi absolutely crunches Nat Bomberto. I think she'd be winded. So Agbizi and Natalie Bomberto coming together here. Oh. Yeah, that was an undercut to the belly. Accidental. But <laughs> well, uh, Kendra Slavinsky, former England captain, will be enjoying this contest. She's with Amanda Shalala. Well, Kendra, it's been an absolutely frenetic uh, first quarter out there. What have you thought of the match so far? Oh, it's thrilling. It's thrilling. And, it, and I think this so far is the match of the tournament. Uh, Cox and McMahon, you know, they're under a lot of pressure from, McMahon, uh, from uh, McLoma and Mentor. And equally, I think if England can get early ball down to uh, Brownfield, then I think on a one-for-one -one with Liz Ellis, it might be our easier route for England to take. But it, this is just enthralling. Well, Brownfield has been shooting amazingly well in that first quarter particularly. Uh, how do you think she's handling this stage and what do the Aussies need to do to stop her? I think she's very cool, she's very calm. And her, uh, there are occasions where her timing is a little out, but once she has that dodge on Ellis, it's great. So on occasions when Pamela Cookie stays out of the circle and that one for one is on, it's really effective. Having said that, as much as the pressure is on Australia, I think Cap Cox's movement outside the circle is really dictating things and it's very strong. Well, thanks very much, Kendra. We'll let you enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks to Amanda Shalala and Kendra Slavinsky, former England captain. Well over 100 internationals. Gerard to Nat Bomberto, who's okay. Gee, she did receive some attention for a while. McMahon. Nice split to get herself closer. Goal defence out, so that's one out of the way. McLoma. And now they're both out. <laughs> that's how McMahon would prefer it. Look at how much height she's giving away. The umpire clearly telling the girls to step beside and away. England centre pass well defended by Australia, but Agbizi received it eventually and gets it again. McCloma, floater there for Clark. Cookie. Brownfield just rolls one out of the circle, and who's got the stronger hands? Yes. Well done, Julie Prendergast. Great pick-up. A risky ball. It was either going to be a rolled ball or an intercepted one. Gerard uses the floor to find Nat Bomberto. Australian's trapped in the centre third here. It's got to be patient. It's tight defence. The English players are going one-on-one. -on -one. Patience of Australia rewarded here. Oh, mentor right in the back of McMahon. Or did she milk it a little? No, I think she would have was ridden to the ground then, Steve. Australia. 
14-11, Australia. And to every time they get two or three goals out, England come running back at them. Will they again? And you've got to be in front once, of course. <laughs> And McCloma pinged again. And McCloma's being called earlier than when the take happens. Cox. Oh, mentor, that rebound was all hers. They needed the shot to go. Australia's uh, high return in earlier games, not happening here, but their defence has been outstanding. Laura Von Berto filters another turnover. Cox to the top of the circle. McCloma's not happy at all with this umpiring. Oh, too bad. And I think <laughs> she's, like, clearly doing it, yeah. so... Get used to it if you're going to do that. Lauren Nurse was warming up while Nat Bomberto was receiving attention. And, uh, oh, what a baptism that would have been. <laughs> Clark, lovely ball to Brownfield. Should slot this one on the way she shot in the first quarter. Beautiful shot by... Brownfield, seven from eight from her for the match. And Australia with a 4 2 second quarter so far. McMahon oh, rockets a pass out to Laura Von Berto. What about now? Well, mentor. McMahon can take this all day, so whether the umpires want to do something about it. Yeah, and that's the thing. If, if the umpire just warned, then they'd have to start stopping doing it. They'd have yeah. to adjust. As we see there, the strong take from McMahon gets barreled to the floor. She's on eight from 11. When you think she's got to pick herself up every time. Bounce, contact, wing attack. Brownfield, lovely take. Ellis knows she's in for a game here on Brownfield. But a little touch from Gerard. They're working in concert again to get the turnover. Nat Lombardo, Gerard on the fly, oh, she's quick. Sometimes, uh, you know, you, you don't get the plaudits as a defender, but when you see them driving up court like that, it's fun to watch. Well, it just helps your attackers so much. Australia missed the goal, though. So they're just four in front. Atkinson, Agbizi, and McCloma. Cookie. They're working with patience. This England attack end. Brownfield out this time. Ellis. Ah, oh, brilliant front position by Ellis. Oh, nearly a held ball there, but Nat Bomberto. Oh, they mount fantastic pressure coming out of uh, on Australia coming center. out of defence, England. Well, they take at the intercept and then they've got to find someone and everyone's covered. Nat Von Berto, Laura just sort of drifting back. I think she was knocked around a bit by an earlier contact. Oh, Australia's, that was yeah, two was hands out for that, you Mint, think? Yeah, okay. Mentor flicked it off on the other side of the post. Todd agrees with you, I'll just sit quiet. Oh, that pressure on that ball. <laughs> oh, I love that little rolling ball. Short. Well, McMahon had to have a go at that. She was under the post. Cox, 8 from 14. She certainly missed a few this quarter. McCloma and Mentor, they might be giving away a lot of contact, but uh, they are having an effect on the accuracy of the Australian goalie. Brownfield. Ooh, Great nearly take a bat. from Clark. <laughs> Hooky, didn't want to shoot. Brownfield. Lovely move from her. Oh. And a beautiful jump. Great, well timed by Moni Gerard. Bandage contact centre. Australia has had ten more attempts uh, to lead it by four. Good use of the body by Mentor to protect that loose ball. Is Over third. third. I thought that they had missed it. It was like people were yelling it out, and I didn't know whether he was going to call it. Four by third. Nat Von Berto. Halfway through the low scoring game compared to what we've seen. But that's because both ends are great defensively, so the pressure's on. McMahon works for the front. They drop two back on Kath Cox. <laughs> she just leaves it there. Bit of a step there from McMahon, perhaps. And they gratefully take the goal. I think some of the other nations here, the minnows, if you like, just be uh, 
a gape yes. at what they're seeing here. What a match. Jeeva Mentor, a keeper by herself in the ring. She's got to keep her feet moving. She can't be left stagnant. McMahon to take the long shot. Contact against McClamour on landing. That was pretty evident. She landed on the feet. Tough shot by McMahon. 7-2 this quarter, Australia. Is this the one that breaks it open? Can't question the endeavour of England. They've just made a few crucial mistakes. Oh, Nat Lomberto contact. Just disputing the loose ball with Clark. Oh, Gerard. Super. Yeah. Monia Gerard's having a whale of a game. Just reading it well, seeing it early and going for it. That's what she's doing. And delighting the coach. Norma Plummer's just uh, so pleased, obviously, with that effort. The athleticism in that Gerard family is uh, really something to be admired and enjoyed. Well backed up by Julie Prendergast. Cox. Laura Von Berto. McBeasy out of play. He's working over Nat Von Berto. Yeah, one, it. yeah, one on one in the circle by the English defenders. The England team getting an absolute bath here from the whistles of the umpires Cormac and Hines. But, uh, so hard are Cox and McMahon having to work. The shooting has gone off. Step there, lazy feet from McLoman. Was very lazy feet. 28 attempts to 15 for Australia. And only lead it by six. Well placed pass by Laura Von Berto. Oh, Cox and McMahon, a little miscommunication there. They nearly ran into the same position, but it worked out all right. Now the quarter is 8-2 to Australia, and their lead is seven. Four and three-quarter minutes left in the second. This is for a place in the final, remember. The world, oh, McMahon, too quick, too determined. Where was Atkinson? Atkinson was nowhere to be seen. I think she thought, oh, that ball's coming to me and didn't give due respect to the speed of McMahon off the mark. She is an athlete. Cox, long bomb, thank you. Oh, brilliant shooting. Take that. Do you see, she lines up straight through for a swish. Is that backspin that you like to see? Backspin galore. <laughs> okay. That's been a long time coming, Cookie. Mark Caldo, a little dispirited. I think she said it's been a long time mm. just then. Oh. The Vombertos have it between them. They're just quick, at least as quick as the England midcourt, but are they more skillful? Well, well, they're all covered now. We've had lots of tributes for England's defence this week, but I think it's Australia's that has been the more dominant. On the arm, mentor. They can can boo, but you know, the umpires have got to call it like they see it, and if it's there, we think it is. Well, I think it is, and, and there's clearly just little taps on the arm that previously they've normally got away with. Yeah. There's a touch there from Gerard, could have been contact, I think. Certainly there, and again, surely. Oh, nearly there for Julie Prendergast. Just oh. an extra step on it. She nearly yeah, had she was it. all over Atkinson. <laughs> she nearly had it. Brownfield. Beautiful goal. Mark Caldo looking a little bit worried here. They didn't really contest that centre no, pass. No, that was an easy centre pass for Australia, and they've worked it straight down oh, the top of the circle. Lovely drive along the baseline from Cox. She's had herself available two or three times. And they're working hard just to... Now, how's a shot after all of that? Spot on. Well, she did work overtime. She's got me saying, girls, give it to me. Don't waste my energy. I think she ran 40 metres just to finally get that pass. And then you've got to make the shot. Well, she did. Gerard with the outside hand. Perfect. Player of the half for mine. Try the job, side. <laughs> Catch what it's just like. Uh. Oh, great take by Natalie Bomberto. Fox. If you don't defend me, I'll do this. She's 12 from 8, 18. 23 to 14. Wasn't expecting this in the second quarter after it was 11-10 at the first break. 
The centre passes are getting a little bit too easy here for Australia. They need to tighten up that defence. McMahon, confident now. She, I thought she might take the shot there. Cox just shoots a smile at McLoma. And Mark Caldo has gone pretty quiet. Now the defence is turned. Brownfield. Has to go back to Agbizi. And that's better pressure from Julie Prendergast. Really forcing Atkinson away from the circle edge. She's growing into this match. The match is often about withstanding the initial blitz. And then steadying and getting on with the job. And it seems that it's Australia. With the shooter. Who have settled and getting on with it. Lead by 10 now. Step in. And stepping on Gerard. It's an awkward land or an extra step on it. Atkinson. And Brownfield. Tall and in space. Good attempt from Gerard. Australia centre pass. And Gerard just sort of motors up the middle and says, I'll have it. She's had a lot of possession this quarter. And Agbeezy often getting caught behind from these speedy Bombertos. Fox and McMahon just having to work so hard. Fox. Oh, opens beautifully on the baseline. Great screen from McMahon there. Back out by 10 with just uh, 15 seconds left in the quarter. Australian defence will be trying to just stop one more. Make England look and consider a double-digit deficit. Cookie! Oh, <laughs> Gerard just pushed her out of court. And should get this one. Well, what a second quarter. England scored six, but it was enough from Norma Plummer. And Newton is on at wing defence. Away we go. Australia sitting on a nine-goal lead. Is that enough? Well, it won't be if they don't play well. Gerard. And Greenway is on at goal attack. So Cookie is off. And Newton is on for Agbizi. Oh, wait oh, a minute. I mean, that, I'd just about give a warning for that. Yeah. That was so blatant. Was pulling the arm straight down on the offside. That was very average. A Greenway on at wing attack. Goal attack, I beg your pardon. The man of Newton at, uh, is at wing defence. Greenway through the hands of Clark. Sloppy, but not the kind of mistakes they were making against lesser opponents. Prendergast, Gerard. Good patience from Australia. Matt Bomberto gets the bouncing Great ball. Balance just to stand there on one leg. It's quite tricky. <laughs> Laura Bomberto, Cox finds herself a path. Very I comfortable. Shot. I love that Yeah, shot. very comfortable. What is 7, 16. A Stroke. positional switch from Cox and McMahon. So Cox doing all the driving and got McMahon on the base. Ball attack, contact. Ball oh, attack. Oh, that's, she, she, she stepped back, put her leg up, and they're saying, for balance, yeah. that that's not allowing the defender to land. Ellis took it clean-ish. <laughs> got, got it back. It's fine. <laughs> that's the kind of thing she finds a way to do after they've lost possession. Just, uh, so I'm going to get this back somehow. Matt Bomberto. Loving this game. Oh, case. fantastic movement by McMahon. It's certainly working against oh, Mentor. That was a, a really a poor attempt by Sherelle McMahon. It just There was no leg drive or push. Nothing. No, <laughs> it was a terrible shot. She spent some petrol <laughs> yeah, out there in the has. first half. She'll get it back. And sometimes she does give up a penalty after giving up possession or a, or a poor shot like that, and that's what happened. Greenway. And Gerard called for shortening there. So shortening the distance. She must be creeping in a little bit before she jumps. Oh, good attempt from Nat Bomberto, but uh, it drew the whistle. Yes. She gave up 
a penalty on Clark. Oh, yeah, just, put her, yeah, yeah. just put her arms up too early there. A couple in a row for England. And they'll need some more of that. Laura Von Berto, Cox. McMahon drifting back to the post, but it's got to go through Nat Von Berto first. Cox doing a lot of work outside. Gee, the passing around the circle is so crisp. And that's what opens it up for your attack for your goalers. If the attackers get that ball moving, gee, it just swings the ball um, so quickly into your goalers. The ball can beat the player in so many sports if the pass is right. Clark, excellent. And Brownfield. that was good placement again by the English attack end. Contact from Berto. Well, Brownfield gave Ellis a good old shoulder there. Really in, into the side. Good movement from Brownfield. Well done, Gerard. Ellis needs some help. Where's it going to come from? <laughs> Prendergast. Oh, it's heart in the mouth stuff as Australia comes out of defence sometimes. Cox. He should yep. come back for the initial offside. Did he call? Roy, wing area, Australia. 28 to 18. Australia keeping this uh, lead around 9 or 10. Cox trapped back there by arms and legs. But good placement by McMahon to push it out and retake it. On the ball, pass or shot. Now there's so much going on in that circle with the defenders as they obstruct Australia. 41 penalties against England to 22 Australia and it might be two to one but I'll tell you what we're seeing here and I'm trying to see it through unbiased eyes is that there's a lot going on from the England defenders. Against Prendergast. Yeah, Prendergast for driving in. Oh, Ellis late. That wasn't a very good one. Should be all right. Hold a, a quick time out, but she'll be okay. I think she just got a bit tangled. She's holding the um, quad. Well. So just giving the quad a bit of a stretch after this, but she really should have pulled out of that one. And when you look at her teeth, she's just gr gritting her teeth going, oh, she was just angry at that. She knew she should have pulled out. I think she's seen enough of what's going on at the other end and think, I need a bit of a get square here. <laughs> but that didn't look too good. No, it was <laughs> the right, fairly the right late. Arm, and, uh, the right arm didn't belong where it was going, no. I tell you. Anyway, it's, uh, it's not a non-contact sport. Let's uh, just dispel that myth right now, if we hadn't already. It's not with 14 bodies out there charging around as quickly as they are. It's, uh, it is not a non-contact sport network. They're treating this injury as a corky. That's why they're putting the tape around there to stop the swelling. She's got to get back out there, so they want to make sure it gets keeps warm. Keep it moving. So Sean Mungavan, uh, physio for the Australian team, has been for a while taking care of this. And the uh, visiting teams here. A lot of them uh, will be pretty tired at the end of a week of torrid netball, but they'll be enjoying this. Brownfield. That was a good steadier for England. She had to hit that shot. Gerard, uh, the loose ball. Greenway just couldn't get two hands on it. Prendergast, and the defenders flood back, AFL style really, <laughs> there's only so many allowed down there. Contact, Contact against Mentor. Royal, Australia. See if all the Australian shots had gone they'd be 15-20 uh, in front. And Laura Bomberto getting called for holding. Brownfield, Atkinson, 
Greenway. Greenway just doesn't look comfortable out there when you think compared to Cookie, I think steps up to this sort of level. I have been impressed with uh, Joe Harton when she's been out there, but she's more of a goal shooter in the goaling uh, end. So that's not an option for Mark Caldo to consider. By 11, and with the centre pass. At 8.30 left in the third quarter, is Australia on their way to the final? And the second semi is between New Zealand and Jamaica. Oh, beautiful work. Yeah, that's uh, that had McCloma turning inside out. 43 attempts to 24. That certainly wins you a game with that many, that much difference in, in the attempts. It's more than nearly double. Greenway gives it off. Brownfield is found by Clark. That was a nice play by the English. McMahon. Sort of a quieter period here in this third quarter as she just lets the game kind of take care of itself with Cox playing such a dominant hand. Beautiful done. The Cloma. Quick reflexes, long hands, long arms. It's just the long arms, they're yeah. amazing. Greenway. Obstruction against Gerard. Take the risk, but uh, she's got it back in handy position as Ellis came to the top of the circle looking for it. And Brownfield from behind couldn't get a clean ball away from Gerard. Prendergast, Ellis, Gerard Freer. Two went after Prendergast. Contact centre, penalty pass. Jay Clark, the contact call this time, the centre for England. Certainly, they've got the rhythm, contact Australia. Oh. Goes against McMahon. <laughs> I don't think she can quite believe it. She picks herself up, gets on with the game. See what happened here. Well, I don't know how yeah. that could possibly be a McMahon contact, but Dalton. She was just sandwiched in the middle. I think Dalton thought, I'll just make a surprise yeah. call here. Norma Plummer and Mark Caldo, old rivals. So Mark Caldo's term at England finishes uh, at the end of this World Championships, doesn't yes, it? Yes, she's coming home to Australia. She's um, had four years there. Time to. Uh, have a bit of a rest, she said. Get a break from the England weather. <laughs> Contact against Prendergast. Gerard tumbles to the floor. This is uh, making it a little bit easier for England on this trip to the post. And they're back to within nine. McMahon. And McCloma trying to cut off the drives from the attackers. Just waiting for McMahon. Nat Bomberto to Laura. Lots of movement in that circle. Cox. No. Yeah, McMahon tried to take it, but just couldn't grab it in. Australia's been pretty dominant in this quarter, but uh, a couple of late mistakes. There's one now. Under pressure from McMahon chasing McLoma. Frantic netball, I have to say. Well, it's unlike anything we've seen until today. It certainly is frantic, but look, I think that Australia is just keeping composure. They're getting the knocks, and they're still getting the scores. If that's not contact or obstruction, then it's certainly intimidation, the way that the hand is in front of the face there. I'll, you know. I don't know what I think defenders get in a frame of mind where they think, I'll just keep giving this away and giving this away until he, the umpire thinks, well, I can't just keep blowing it. Well, at the end and of the day, wear them down. Yeah, in, in the game of netball, you know, you don't have like five contacts and you're off. It's yeah. like you can keep going, going, going until the umpire does something about it. So, yeah. And I, I think it's actually a weakness of the rules that, that they can keep offending without being warned. But it's up, the um, it's up to the umpire. I mean, the, rule, the rules are there for the umpires to do something about it if they want to. 
And I just think if they if they warn early, that's when the defenders would pull out because they know that the umpires are serious about wanting to be clean. Laura von Berto to Cox. And after that little rules discussion in clinic. Good take by Laura von Berto under pressure from Clark. Contact sent in defence. Quickly taken by the Australians. Just catch the defence napping there. The hands on the ball every time. Lois Muir there, I think we caught a little glimpse of it. Former New Zealand coach, the familiar white haired uh, Lois Muir. Wonderful woman in world netball. Always get a sensible comment out of Lois. Gerard trying to defend around the corner. Brownfield makes a nice dart into space. Three minutes left, third quarter. The margin was nine at half time, it's nine now. Australia won the second quarter 14 6. Oh, loose one. McMahon doesn't want to shoot from there. Oh. Uh, she got up there, just couldn't quite flick it to her teammate. Contact against Nat Bomberto, so it's mid court with England. Ellis. That was a great touch by Ellis. They've just about taken the Australian defence apart there, so it was a timely moment from Ellis. Slow it all down. And you can see Ellis is going out hunting for those balls, and it's just making Brownfield go a little bit too early on her leads. Whoops. And Ellis smiles at Gerard. You won't be smiling if they're not in front after 60 minutes. I'll tell you that. She is one passionate competitor. Hates to lose, the Australian captain. Nearly got her for the three seconds there. Brownfield. She's 15 from 20. Louisa Brownfield. Oh, gee, they're, they're, only, they're within eight. A possession and a goal there. I know, it seems Australia should be so much more further ahead, but she had that spent, that ball. She was getting ready for the next pass. Gerard. Nat Von Berto. Prendergast. Great noise in the stadium. This is the best atmosphere we've had in the tournament so far. Patience from Australia to work the ball through. Oh, Laura Von Berto is too quick for anyone here, I think. Oh. And the Kiwi team is in the stadium. That, that'll get them going. Cox. Australia needs this. And the Australian bench is up and warming up in case there are replacements needed at three-quarter time. I, I don't, they won't be comfortable, Australia. Nine up because they've been up as, by as many as 12. Keep this combination going well i'd stick with the seven i would yep. really stick with what's out there they've got the lead they've got to do the job and hang on and, and and get the win in the end half a minute left in the third quarter gerard determined gerard again what a player she's having a fantastic game is gerard she's worth two players <laughs> oh, that might be a slight exaggeration but um... Oh, oh, a bit lucky. Well, Jeeva Mento, I thought she had that in front, but went through her hands. And the Aussies pretty pleased with the little run that they, their team has shown here. Cox needs to put this one up in a hurry. Doesn't get the opportunity to do that. But a couple of steadying goals for Australia to push it back out to 11 when uh, they were only eight in front. And Gilsonen is back out there. Some smiles on the faces of Australian players here because they feel they're just about in the final. Brownfield. That's the start Australia wanted. Held ball against Brownfield. Gilsonen. Trying to get a feel for the pace of the match. So Greenway. Goal attack. Newton in defence. Oh, they're not showing us any changes there, but Gilsonen is on. At wing defence. I thought they might have brought Cookie in for the last quarter. 
Well, yeah, I don't think the movement has been quite there for England with her going off, so interesting move. Or, or non-move, if you like. It, it's a decision, it's just not a change. <laughs> Fox. She followed in her shot there, and that's what you should do as a goaler. Australia pleased to get the first goal of the last quarter. And they've got it by 12. McMahon, Cox. Jade Clark. I think there's uh, more sympathy in the crowd for the underdogs England in this one. And when the calls have been 50-50, the reaction has been favouring England. Yes. I think New Zealand want to play... Um England for sure, rather than Australia. They know how hard it is to play Australians in the contest. Brownfield. Oh, unlucky Australia. Liz Ellis got up for it. Brownfield. Lovely shot. It's a beautiful release on that. Great flick of the wrist at the end. Australia's got great young players coming through as well, but I, I really like England's prospects down the years when you look at the age of this squad they've got out there. Brownfield and Cookie 23. Greenway is 25, touch old, a bit more experienced. Gilson and Laura Lomberto. Well, five members of the, this English team actually played at the 2005 World Youth Cup. So together they got a silver medal there. Gilson and Matt Lomberto, McMahon. Time absolutely on the side of the Australians. They can just uh, not have to hurry about their goals unless they were to get behind. There's some great movement there and patience from Australia to work it in. Uh, mum. It's great that a mum is over here watching Olive. Olive, it's great that she's here because she hasn't often travelled overseas to see her daughter play. This is the first time she's been over overseas at all. Brownfield did exceptionally well to keep offside it in play. Sends the free pass, England. Now, Lomberto offside this time. Contact ball defence outside. And Gerard has had a clean and spectacular game at goal defence for Australia. <laughs> Good try. Good try because she started to defend from behind the shot. Australia. Ten is the lead. England scored ten in the first quarter, six in the second, nine in the third. So they're going to have to score a lot of goals in the last quarter to pull off a miraculous win. And if you watch McCloma here in this defence event, she is holding McMahon on the skirt, on the arm, on the leg. That last passage of play, and she'll do it again now. Just give it a good wipe. And come back to the Good girl. On me, on me, on me! No, wait, wait, wait! Wait, take it back out! Take it back out. On me. Okay, it's on. blue time, you have to yeah. blow time again. Yeah, now, the arms was kind of loosely around McMahon that time. We're just watching. Sue Kenny and uh, Norma Plummer would be relieved Martin and proud of the effort so far today. Still got 10, 11 minutes left. Out. I'm ready, I'm ready to talk up their chances of making the final now, but what a low-scoring game. Well, it really has been the defending, defending team's sort of game. Really both down. defensive ends have been all over the match. Tell you what, this is panning out quite nicely if Gilson gets through this quarter, Touchwood, that they've at least tested her before the final. And they'll, they'll see how she recovers as well yeah. tomorrow from it. Oh. I guess you're right, just because she plays today doesn't mean she's going to be alright tomorrow. Um, mentor unlucky, she was floored there. And the hand. Yeah. Yeah. The centre passes are being taken very easily by Australia. They're not stopping them at all, the English. Uh, that really takes what little wind was left in the English sails away. Atkinson. Greenway across to Clark. Brownfield has uh, shown us what a class player she is today. 
19 from 24. Is that the best on court, Todd? Yeah. Cox has got uh, 25 from 34, uh, percentage-wise. And Cookie was 7 from 7. Thanks. All right. Greenway. And they <laughs> did pretty well to pull out of that. Uh, could have cleaned up Newton, but it's with Brownfield again. Well, Liz Ellis went out hunting and couldn't get anything, but she's got the rebound. Gilson and floats it over the top for Nat Bomberto, Laura, Cox. McMahon. Just watch the hands on the shot. It's just give us a break. Say something to the defenders. Clean it up. We're entitled to see cleaner netball in this. Yes. And if you don't tell the defenders to stop it, warn them, they'll just keep doing it. They will. I've played you, against many. Do you not share my frustration here as a sports I lover? No, I do share your frustration, but... Look, I don't mind if it's England, I don't mind if it's Australia, just... Gilson. Gerard. It's very open for Australia, great drives. Gerard's been queen of the court out there for me. She just, now she looks like she's controlling the thing. She owns it. <laughs> yeah. She certainly owns the court, just to Bonnie and Gerard. Australia's starting to put their foot down. 43 to 29. And I think the fight has a little bit gone out of the British Bulldog here. Much tighter pressure from the Australians off centre passes. Gilson in. A little risky, but good. It's a well-weighted pass. I think uh, uh, that through the hand of McMahon, she shoots a look at Alison Cormack. No uh, support there. But do you get the impression that Selena Gilson is just pacing herself, holding a bit back? I feel that she is, Steve. It's a good observation. She's kind of just going in there, testing it a little bit, a bit half pace. Ruth Aitken, Kiwi coach, watching. It's interesting that she's out in the crowd here although her players are too. And uh, her semi-final is only a little time away for Julie Seymour and Liana Debrain sitting there, Silver Ferns. Well, we certainly uh, know that Australians will come out after their cooldown and watch the Silver Ferns if they are to get through this match successfully. So you're better off playing the first semi-final first so that you can do that. Yeah, and I suppose well, time is so precious with a short turnaround that at least get another couple of hours. Exactly, that's it's so true. A couple more hours of physio, massage. Do you feel it makes a difference, even a couple of hours? Well, if you saw how long I stood up on the massage bench, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a lovely ball and just not quite cleanly taken by McMahon under the pressure of the McClomer defence. Whoopsie. That was a terrible throw-in. Like, it was just no way, no way near any of her teammates. Six twenty left in the match. Australia's uh, got a foot in the door of the final. It's a long time since they've missed the final. You've got to go back to uh, 1987. It was kind of a funny format in Glasgow that year. Fantastic rebound from McMahon there. So. Looks like New Zealand's going to have to wait a little bit longer for their next... Sorry, England's going to have to wait longer for their win over Australia after uh, 34 consecutive victories for Australia. One victory for England only, and it was 26 years ago. Norma Plummer. OK, just look after yourselves now. You've got uh, six minutes left, or less, and you're out by 15. Selena Gilson, and then, who thinks she's just... Playing well within herself. Well, Selena, look, I'm. I just think she's going at it at half pace. She's really just taking it very easy, controlling her lands every time, and obviously doesn't want to test that ankle, you know, too much. She wants to be able to get through. There is some positive signs, though, the fact that she has got out there. Um, it'll be well strapped. She's doing a few little dodges, but yeah, not not at full pace, I would say, at the moment the left ankle that uh, she has concern about and 
moving around at about three-quarter pace, I guess. And that, for that, uh, that's uh, full pace for most people. England trailing by 15. Uh, really can't win it. Not enough minutes left. So Australia will get the opportunity to win back the title lost in Jamaica to New Zealand in 2003. It's a great take by Greenway, but she, it's, it's funny that she's handed the ball off to Brownfield. I know that Brownfield's shot a lot better, but it just means you're not confident in yourself. Gerard, just uh, imperious in her play today. McMahon, kind of gives the, the pass to Cox, that Cox shot to her a few minutes ago, and she couldn't take her mentor's height meant that that ball was hers. Newton. Oh, sorry, it was McClomer. Tight one-on-one -on -one defence from the Australians. Oh, Ellis, oh, get out. <laughs> sensational work from Liz Ellis to read that early and come out for the fly. Uh, 34 years young, Liz Ellis, and still as hungry for the ball as ever. Gilson and... Third intercept for Liz Ellis. And whether you like her or don't in this crowd, she uh, drew plenty of applause for that intercept. McCloma just looking at the umpire there, but, you know, she really came from behind. They're not even attempting to get in front to have a go. Atkinson, Brownfield. Great hands from Liz Ellis at three feet, backed up by Gerard. And Greenway didn't even try for that. The ball was in the air. Gerard was the one with eyes to it. I was just unsure why Cookie wasn't put out. She had seven from seven at goal attack. Chatfield enjoying this. As we see Alice at three feet. She's got fantastic aerial ability. Cox, Nat Bomberto, Cox, they're just running out of steam, I think, Mentor and McCloma. They're not as keen for the contest as they were an hour ago. And that's understandable. They've taken a while to wear them down, Australia, but I, I think that 14-6 second quarter just broke it open. It did, and there's 68 attempts to Australia at goal to 40 for England, so you certainly... Can't win a match with only 40 attempts. Matt <laughs> <laughs> Fomberto nearly won it back. It's got a bit scrappy the last minute or three. But, uh, these are what, uh, in some sports, they call junk minutes. They are, and what they, because the contests have been so tough, Round the bodies two. are just getting tired. Uh, Mark Caldo. Knows that uh, the dream is over for England. Australia's had to fight mighty hard and get a great game out of this girl, Monia Gerard, to help end that dream. Cox, they've had a flood of possession without goaling particularly well. McMahon hasn't had one from out there. Cox. But she shot fantastic from out that distance. They've rebounded very well. Cox and McMahon. Rebounds 10-6 Australia. Last couple of minutes. And there'll be uh, relief all over the faces of these Australians. They were very worried about this match, and rightly so. Six bad catches to four. We, we, kind of, we haven't been sure what that's meant all week, have we? <laughs> not a drop. quite sure. I guess it means a drop ball under not too much pressure. Yes, that's right. You know, there are forced and unforced errors. If I can borrow the term from tennis. Mentor's been called for a few contact on the ball. She puts her hand on the ball before it's released. Gilsonen. Being sure to land on the right ankle, not the, the left. Box. Oh, uh, and now that's better umpire. There was a little apology in there because she wanted to play 
the advantage and didn't quite get the opportunity. So I appreciate that effort. As McMahon chases up her own ball on the sideline. McMahon. Nineteen from twenty-seven for Sherelle McMahon. Last half minute turnover. Australia have reached the half century. Didn't look all that likely after an eleven goal first quarter. McMahon is just one tough cookie. She has been belted all match and got one then again and still is standing strong. Gets on with the job. Totally tough professional athlete. There it is, Australia through to the World Championship final. They've blown away the challenge of England by 18 goals after the margin was just one at quarter time. Well, they're through. Who will follow them? It'll be New Zealand or Jamaica, but we've got a full-time score here of 51 to 33. Now, Liz Ellis smiling. Uh, it's this uh, little tradition in the middle as they give each other three cheers, but uh, there's only one team happy about the outcome. Well, look, I think it would be disappointing for England as they walk away, probably to the bench there. They certainly would have thought that they were going to be in the contest a lot more than that they were. Well, you reflect on that seven-goal margin back in May, and we thought, here come England, and, and they have been impressive. But Australia just were able to step it up today. And the, the umpires, although we were critical at times, they had to be tough on these England defenders who were quite willing to go over the, uh, the letter of the law. Well, they were. I think they were fairly undisciplined.